one, two, three. Come on, everybody. No matter what age you are, why the hell aren't my headphones working? Is anything working? Hello. My, my mic is on, Paul. My mic's not working? Your mic is not working. Are you plugged in? Oh, try it now. Hello? Oh. Oh. I did a crazy opening and you missed it. Oh. Oh. Thank you anyway. You know what I want you to do? Give me a little bit of the theme music and let's start the whole goddamn thing over with. You know, God damn it. Just everybody go back in time. Back in time, everybody. Dirty John didn't turn my goddamn mic on. You sabotaged no. me. You sabotaged me right into the goddamn ground. Keep that going. Dun, da, da. It's about time for the show to start. Now my mic is on. Dirty John, you son of a bitch. Why did you screw me? I'm trying to sabotage the show. Ready? Now quiet, so they think it's the beginning of the show. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, start to bring it down. And here's your host, Paul Hobler. <laughs> Providence, get down with the Pizzow, Providence, get down with the m and and Pizzow. What's up? Get down with the Pizzow, Providence. That's actually a quote from street musician Christian Jordan from our yes. film, The Cringe Full Exposure. A lot of you uh, at home might know who Christian Jordan is. Christian Jordan, um, as a matter of fact, is uh, the street uh, guitar performer who you might see on Thayer Street pretty much every day. He's still there. Remember Christian Jordan? I, I do. Mm, we're I nodding do. at me with a strange yes, looking. I'm sorry. Eyes. Well, I'm, I have uh, a little bit of a sore throat tonight. You have pot. You have well. pot caught in your throat. <laughs> 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 so let me just do my opening. I, my, I went like that. I did a little something like this. Right. Step right up. Step right up. One, two, three. What the? What? Der- Who the hell was that? I'm sorry. I had what? a. Like I said, I have a sore throat, yeah. so I can't really laugh too much tonight, and I don't want you to be without <laughs> your, your giggles. Let me have another giggle for the, for the sake of argument. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? That just brings out the happiness in me. Lickety split, <laughs> you son of a bitch. I like that. I knew you would like it. And, 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 and we're going to call that person there Giggly. Giggly. And Giggly is going to be appearing as uh, one of our guests on today's episode of No Positive Radio. That's Hello, right. ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to No Positive Radio. My name, as always, is Paul Hullabaloo. Why, thank you. And save a little of that applause for yourself, because to my right at precisely 1 o'clock, the master of all that is electronically motivated, the minister of all that is electronically motivated, his name is... Just Dirty John. <laughs> you sly fox. <laughs> you clever little angel. Uh, Let me have a sip of my Coke. Come on, don't keep them waiting on Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so happy that you've tuned in to one of our uh, final shows uh, here at No Positive Radio. Not Mm. one of the final shows of No Positive Radio, for the history of No Positive Radio. Hell no! But one of our final shows here at WALE Studios, here at 1185 North Main Street in Providence. We think. Sent, no, I know, because uh, I do (laughs) not have $2,600 to pay for another goddamn (laughs) season. A lot of you at home must think, God, what what a life it must be being an on-air personality, making money hand over fist. But no, no, not here, folks. No. Here you have to pay to get your damn show. Yeah. I do a one-hour show every week, and it costs uh, Dirty John and I approximately uh, $200 a week, $200 an hour. So if you do a 13-week season, that's a, that's a, that's a grand total of uh, $26 million, <laughs> essentially. In, in, Ooh, I in, got a giggle out. In my world. You got a giggle? Giggly, back to you. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> giggly, giggly. It's not funny, giggly. Okay. There's nothing to laugh about. It's very expensive, giggly. No, but now, uh, seriously, there's no chance of a different time slot or a... No, I'm, you know wow, what? Frankly, can I be honest with we're you? We're done? Are we? Let me be honest with you, and we're going to have a... I love how you tell the co-host. Or, I'm sorry, what am I, a sidekick? You're or the co-host. You're what the, am I? You are the co-host and co-producer of this show. Okay. You've done a wonderful job over the past uh, <laughs> I can't believe it's six months. Ending. As of October 20th, that'll be our final Friday night show. Wow. And that will have been 26 episodes, 26 hours of No Positive Radio. That was six months of broadcasting. It's amazing. Went by very quickly. Yes, it did. I remember fondly when I first found out that we were going to have a show here at <laughs> WALE. And WALE, of course, one of the oldest radio stations in all of southern New England. Yeah. A lot of history. Uh, Jeff Charles. Of course, Steve White, who's still uh, rotting away here in this very chair. As a matter of fact, my hand was just on his uh, cigarette burns right here on the console. <laughs> See them? Those are Steve White's cigarette burns wow. right there. 
And uh, of course, adding to that wonderful, beautiful lineage of. I thought of, there, was, there was a big sign right behind you that says "No smoking." It's bad for the equipment. This is WALE Studios. <laughs> Nobody has to pay attention to anything. Okay. This is Underground Radio. It's a wonderful station. I'm going to tell you what. No matter where we end up with our radio show, and I can promise you that the radio show itself is not going to end. We may go on a slight hiatus. Yeah, we, just keep your ears open. But, yeah, keep your ears open. I'll try to keep you, you updated. But, you know, frankly, you just said, what about another time slot? Or, yeah. or someone out there could send us $2,600, and we'll gladly then purchase a show again. Dirty John, they don't call. <laughs> I, I, I don't see them sending personal checks. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, if you'd like to call up, and if you'd like to voice your opinions, 621 621- Nine two five three. That's six two one nine two five three. You know what I think happens when every time you say that every week, mm-hmm. it comes out on the other end. Blah 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 yeah. blah blah blah. Nine four five nine four nine four. People just don't, don't want to call. That's all right. But let me just continue my my okay. my, my 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 proselytizing here. Yes. Let me just tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen. I have to say, in in the depths of my soul and in my heart, in all seriousness, you know, excluding my my life of lies here. I'm not living the lie right now, I'm being quite honest with you. I do have a very heavy heart about the fact that we're going to be leaving the studio and yeah. we won't be broadcasting. Frankly, though, the the, the bottom line is I, I, I refuse to pay anymore. I'm not going to pay any more money to these people. Uh, the company's called North American Broadcasting. They're in Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm not going to pay them another $2,600, as much as I'd like to. If I was a rich man, guarantee I can guarantee you I would continue. But I think that we can take this show and bring it somewhere else where it might find a better home and a... You know, maybe a wider audience that actually can pick up this uh, radio station, right? And then pick up the phone. Yeah, six two one nine two five three. But or, or you know, you can stream us out there online. What, what are you? What are your? Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. We never ever promote that, do we? Yeah, if you're having trouble listening to this on the radio, <laughs> you can go online right now to www.renaissanceradio.com. Renaissanceradio.com. You can click the W A L E icon. It says, like, listen here. Yeah, it says, W-A-L-E, listen here. Just click that, and it'll stream right in for you, uh, free of static and uh, free of a seven-second delay. So if I choose to get vulgar or obscene, it'll come right through your damn computer monitor and bite you. Don't worry, I'm not quick enough to get to the dump button anyway. <laughs> or the dumper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, giggly, oh, what do you think? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> giggly. <laughs> oh, that is you know an what's intoxicating weird? Can I laugh. just tell you something? Yeah. I can't hear the giggle track. It's weird. I hear everything else, but that's the one thing. I'm just going on your reaction that's no, actually it's, playing. It hasn't played yet. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. It was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're easy. <laughs> oh, thanks, Giggly. That was funny. Let me just tell you all something. So, yeah, the show's going to end October 20th. But, you know, we're going to go out with a bang. we got a, a number of great shows lined up. Actually, after this week, we have four shows left of the No Positive Radio yep. experience here at uh, WALE. Let me just tell you right here and now. I'm seeing people moving back and forth by the door. They don't oh, call, but apparently they've come in. I don't in. see them. I don't see them. Um, do I have to go out there and kick some ass? Yeah, do it. Do it. Smoke some grass, kick some ass. Now, let me just tell you all. Blah, next blah, week, blah, blah, what blah, an exciting blah, show. Blah, 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 blah. I thank you, you asshole. <laughs> I've been promoting. See, if you're streaming that, you would have just got smacked <laughs> in the face by the word asshole. Let me just tell you, if you're streaming... Uh, no, where, where am I going with this? <laughs> <laughs> I totally <laughs> derailed the thought train. <laughs> No, the fact of the matter is, next week I've been heavily promoting the show because I want everyone to listen. Uh, of course, next week a very special ed- edition of No Positive Radio, and that'll be uh, next Friday night, October fi- uh, September 28th, excuse yeah, me. Yeah. And at uh, 8 p.m., we're going to be having the two stars of the international hit film Fishing with Gandhi. Yep. That's uh, James and John Richmouth. They're uh, twin brothers who are fantastic comedic improvisational actors and the film itself Fishing with Gandhi of course I'll go more into it next week when they're here but it is a, 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 a hilarious uh, endearing and uh, just an incredible incredibly original film if you want to see that movie before I, I suggest seeing it before you listen to the show so you get a feel for what the hell we're talking about and who these guys are I guarantee you I give you my I give it I give it my highest recommendation which is uh, three bu- three thumbs up the bum <laughs> that's the highest recommendation let me just tell you you can get that at Acme Video on Brook Street in the east side of Providence 453 Acme you can get that and uh just four go down five there 453 plug 453 Acme <laughs> 453 friggin pay me for a plug no I'm just kidding Acme Video one of my favorite places on all not just a video store my favorite spots in the whole earth I love I go there every day mm-hmm. I love Acme Video just go to the counter and ask for Fishing with Gandhi. They'll give that to you. You can also get it if you really have to. You can get it at Hollywood Video. 
any one of those Hollywood videos. Fishing with Gandhi. Take a look at it this week. Next week, I get the two stars, James and John Richmith, on the show with Dirty John and me. Yes, sir. The week after that, October 5th. Yeah. Dirty John, very excited about this. How about you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Wild Blue Angels. Woo. The Jimi Hendrix. I can never get that out. It's like I'm an ass. I'm a son of an I'm a son of an ass. All right? The uh, Wild Blue Angels, the Jimi Hendrix tribute experience. Yes. Okay? Besides being a tribute band, there are also three very interesting guys who have lived very interesting lives. Yep. Those guys are, of course, Johnny Edwards on lead guitar and vocals, yep. Keith Pike on drums, and the great bass player and great eccentric individual and bike rider, mm -hmm. John Astori on bass. He's got a couple stories or two. We'll be talking about rock and roll. We'll be talking about the idea of tribute. What, what is it about tribute bands? Right. We're going to get to the bottom of the right. tribute band mystique. We're going to be talking about life on the road. We're going to be talking about musical influences. We're going to be talking about the Bridgewater Triangle. Yes. And that's all I'm going to say. I want you to go online, go to yahoo.com, and look up the Bridgewater Triangle in the search engine. Bridgewater Mass. In uh, Bridgewater Mass, the Bridgewater Triangle. I want you to find out all about that before the show, because we're going to be having an in-depth discussion. Mm -hmm. So, a couple of great shows. After that, I don't know what the hell we're going to do, but I know the last show will have a big old friggin' party. Yep. Right? And we'll laugh, we'll cry, and uh, we'll probably feel I think the uh, towards the end there, too, we're going to have some of those... Uh, new songs by that that band, The Verge. The Verge, The Verge. Remember, we used to talk about The Verge. Well, yes. The Verge have actually completed their album. Yeah, final, the album final, is done. Final stages. Produced uh, by uh, both Mark Wilcox, a frequent guest of this show, and uh, another great producer by the name of Joe Francasio, uh, who's also the guitarist for that band. Mm -hmm. And it's a fan. I've, I've heard. I've I got the preview. I heard it. It's a fantastic album. Really original, uh, interesting songs, and uh, worth listening to. So. Between now and then, you're going to hear a bunch of those songs. Maybe we'll do it like uh, October 12th. Yeah. The show after the Wild Blue Angels. We'll, we'll, that's what we'll do. We'll play a few of those songs. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll intersperse the show, intercut the show with yes. a few of those songs. Yes. Are you noticing it? I'm very low key today. Yeah. But I feel, you know what it is? I think I've got a little bit of. I, I'm honest. I, I got to tell you, I feel a little sad about everything. Like, I feel bittersweet and melancholy about the whole thing. The show? The you show mean? Yeah. Going down the shit. It didn't really hit hit me until we started the show yeah. today. What it, We talked about it, but. This is, wow. This has really been a tremendous, uh, tremendously wonderful experience for me, and I'm, I'm being sincere. I'm, 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 I'm dropping is. the character here, and I'm telling you the truth that I'm. I'm, I'm being honest with you when I say that I've loved every minute of this and I appreciate wholeheartedly everyone who's ever listened to the show whether it be consistently or just for five minutes I, I seriously appreciate it and I seriously love you all yes bring that up a little bit ladies and gentlemen I brought a full gospel choir in today a whole gospel choir bring it up some more let, let, the, let, the, let the, the, the black gospel choir ring God is on our side I'm going to lead you all in a little chorus of We Shall Overcome in honor of the end of No Positive Radio on October 20th. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this is Paul Hullabaloo. Ready? We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall Happened to my goddamn gospel choir. That's the end of the cart. <laughs> Where all the Southern Baptists go? I don't know. Mary, mother of me. Oh, well, later on we'll, we'll continue. We'll have another rousing chorus of We Shall Overcome here at No Positive Radio. I see what I do for you people. I love you so much. I bring in a goddamn Southern, a black Southern uh, 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 gospel choir. No messing from, around. From, from the land of the black Southerners. Yeah. I mean, this is excellent. <laughs> this is No Positive Radio at its finest. All right. What are we doing right now? Playing a song? Yeah. Let's play some rock and roll. The complete opposite of, of a southern choir. That's fine. Let me just tell you, when we come back, we're going to be talking about another fantastic film that you can get at Acme Video. Um, we're going to be talking about it. It's a documentary called Dancing Outlaw. We're going to be playing a clip from it. I'm going to be talking about it, recommending it to you. So come back to No Positive Radio on one of our final weeks of broadcasting. Stay tuned.
Oh yes, a little Frank Zappa and the Mothers for your delicate ears. The Cur Fillmore. What is that? From the oh, Fillmore. Oh, that's live at the Fillmore. 1971. Baby. Yeah, I, I actually have that. I have that CD. It, it's, it is your CD. That was my CD? That's what I was trying to tell you. Oh, you got it out of my books? Yeah. Oh yeah, my book is at the uh, down at the uh, recording studio. Yeah. Oh yeah, I left my CD book down there. I don't like carrying that heavy CD book. I have so much music, I can't even bother carrying it the frig around me. It's too heavy. <laughs> It's too too weighted with with amazing songs, song sing songing. That's what it is. <laughs> Thanks, Giggly. You always you you always pat me on the back when I need it, Giggly. <laughs> Thank you. By the way, folks, if you're ever wondering what I'm doing when he sits there and does those sounds, it's pretty much, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty much what you're doing. It's just staring blankly at... Ironing the straight jacket. <laughs> ...at his face and just like, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, I just found out later on in the hour, probably around a uh, quarter of uh, nine o'clock, we're going to be receiving a call from the producer of mm -hmm. the upcoming Verge album. That's yes. Mark Wilcox. He's been on the show probably more than I've been on the goddamn show. <laughs> He's filled in for me at the He's uh, filled boards. in. We've had a few guys fill in for you because you had to go do other responsible things oh. like support a goddamn family. Wow. Why? Why bother with your family <laughs> when you have a whirlwind radio show like that? Well, if people called, maybe I would want to be here more. Often. We also had Mike Lucas. It's your fault. Uh, of course, Luke Kang. He yes. sat in. He did an yes. excellent job, a wonderful job uh, co-hosting with me one night. Dirty John, you know that I love you. And you know that First off, everything you hear on this show that's produced, like the Skin Pencil 3 clip, all that, all those, the preview, the little Carl things, which you'll hear a new one tonight, a new report, a Carl report tonight, a Carl, I can never, I always sound like I'm from Boston when yeah. I say that. Carl. A Carl. We got a Carl report. A wicked Carl report. Oh boy. No, we have a Carl report, and it's, all these things are produced by Dirty John Winterbottom and another, like I said, uh, Joe Francazio, another fantastic producer and engineer who also, like I mentioned, did the Verge album. They produce all these things, and I always want to make sure they know that they, I think they do a wonderful job. Aww. And I also want you to know that I think you do a wonderful job co-hosting. I'm blushing. And it's been a privilege. I no gotta matter, go outside. No matter where the show goes, you'll have to come, or else I wouldn't even consider having the show. Of course. But if you say you can't come, I'll do the goddamn show anyway. <laughs> okay. I don't give a goddamn hell well, about Well, I'm you. thinking after the show's over, maybe I'm just going to get my own show, if you don't mind. That's fine. Good night, I'm, folks. I have $26. Lie, 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 lie. Would, no, lie, would lie, you lie, get lie, offended lie. if I bought a slot here after this? And, and didn't ask and, me to do it? And just said, no, I'm doing it on my own. But huh. you can come and, and run the boards for me if you want. I'd give you a giggly right up the, right up the ass. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Where is, where is giggly? Throw giggly on. <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> a little louder. <laughs> oh, giggly. <laughs> Giggly, you are just the funniest. You are a sentimental, funny son of a bitch. Why do you have it up again? I'm sorry. Yeah, I you was, don't know. You don't even know. Where more you are. laughing. More oh. hee ha ha. All right, let's talk about Dancing Outlaw. Yes. This is a film. Let me tell you a little backstory on Dancing Outlaw. Acme Video, which I always talk about, they and they don't pay me to plug them, by the way. I plug them out of the kindness of my heart because I love the, sh the, sh the shop. Yeah. It's become like... And that's also our downfall. Maybe if we actually sold some ads, we'd be able to pay for <laughs> Yeah. Them. Maybe if I had asked for some money, <laughs> we wouldn't be retiring from the air. That's okay. Um, let me just tell you guys right here and now. I looked... They have a wonderful documentary section. People that know me know that I, I, I think... I love the documentary genre. It's probably my second favorite genre next to horror films. I love documentaries. I love seeing uh, uh, slices of life that you don't get to see normally. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I tend to believe the old adage that, that truth is stranger than fiction. In this case, I can tell you it is. Dancing Outlaw, which uh, Dirty John also previewed yesterday for the first time, and I'm going to get to his opinion in one second, but my opinion first because I'm Paul friggin' Hullabaloo, yes, the friggin' sir. star. Yes, sir. Let me just tell you, Dancing Outlaw, I just saw it there on the r documentary shelf. It's an... I wonder if they even had a budget for this film. It looks like it was just probably not shot on a home video camera, yeah, probably yeah. edited on a computer. Yeah, they definitely someone gave them a few bucks to edit it. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple minor, not special effects, but, no, but what are those things called? Like the credit sequences and stuff. Titles, like titles, probably done on just like a, a public. It's like a public access, yeah, level yeah. Uh, documentary, but. The subject matter of this film, Dancing Outlaw, is so completely engaging that it makes up, for whatever it lacks monetarily or production in production values, it makes up just in pure substance. Let me give you a little backstory. The film Dancing Outlaw is the story of one man. <laughs> one man, or should I say three men yeah. in the body of one man. Yep. There's, his name is, is Jess, uh, Jesse White, but yep. he's, also, he's Jesse White, he's also Jesco White, yep. and ladies and gentlemen, he's also... Elvis. 
the king himself, Elvis Presley, all rolled into one hillbilly. Yeah. Okay. And this is like hardcore hillbilly. These are mountain people, like you, like Ozark level, you know, Appalachian Trail serious mountain people. I don't know if the Appalachian Trail is in the mountains, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like, let's be honest, poverty stricken. Oh yeah, totally. But. The, the, the cultural color that comes through these people is unbelievable. They live a very vibrant life. I mean, it's almost like they're completely, you know, segmented from normal and rational society. They have their own society. I, I, I was saying to Dirty John earlier, I bet there is really no law enforcement there. I think they enforce their own laws and their own justice. Like uh, Don Knotts as a deputy type of a situation. Exactly. It's like the, the Hatfields <laughs> versus the McCoys. If you have a problem with someone, you get out your goddamn six-shooter and you take him out. Yeah. Well, you know, Jesse James style. Probably beat him up a few times first, then you shoot yeah. him. But let me tell you, it's the story of this man, uh, Jesco White. Mm-hmm. And uh, definitely probably has a split personality. Talk, talks like Elvis all the time, though. Obsessed with Elvis. His whole house is complete, is a shrine to Elvis. Yeah. Or I should say his hovel is a shrine to Elvis. <laughs> Elvis lamps, Elvis carpets. You know everything. He even is. He took his his him and his wife in his bedroom out of the bedroom and made it his quote unquote Elvis Presley recording studio, yeah. where he is currently re-recording Elvis's songs. Mm-hmm. But he believes that he's Elvis, so yeah. it's just Elvis re-recording Elvis's songs. And basically, he's using the equivalent of like a tin can on a string as a, like a microphone. Yeah, and it's really he's very imaginative. Oof. But mm-hmm. his his legacy. He's a great uh, dancer. That's the fun. That's the most incredible part of this thing, and why it's called Dancing Outlaw. He's a weird, inbred hillbilly, but at the same time, a whirlwind tap dancer. Amazing. And his father was one of the greatest tap dancers, probably ever. Yep. And they say in the film that he actually invented, he uh, in an uncredited way invented fifty-two tap steps that had never been done before. But it's almost like an interesting kind of tap. It's like their own way of doing it. There's a lot of like expressive movement with their arms and legs when yeah, they do it. Yeah. It's like very like down home, very country well, yeah, tap very dancing. Country. You know? But I'm gonna tell you what, I can't recommend this movie high enough. It is it's a wonderful lyrical documentary. It's extremely funny, but not in not in an obvious way. It's funny because you're seeing I mean it's easy to say, well, it's funny because these people are hillbillies, but you're laughing o- only because I mean it's just it's an in, 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 it's an instinct to laugh at this. I mean, it's you're, it's a it's a slice of life, like I said, that you're never going to experience any other way except through your, your glorious television, which I love. I love the TV. Yeah. Thank God for the goddamn cathode ray tube. <laughs> okay, I wish I could live inside my cathode ray tube and just be electrified by television images all day. But let me just tell you something. It's a wonderful film. It's very funny. Yeah. It's sublime. It's also very poignant. Um, I don't want to spoil too much, but there's some tragic elements to it. And you see a lot of human emotion. And one thing that's important about this film is it shows that no matter where you live and what you do, it's the old, the old truth of life that, you know, we're all the same. Mm-hmm. We all have the same emotional center. We all respond to, to life and the, the uh, events of life the same way. But this is one strange bird. Mm-hmm. Jessica White. Dirty John, your thoughts? I thought I had one of the greatest openings ever to a <laughs> film uh, wonderful this guy is, is jamming out in this weird little wooden bridge he has one of those tiny boom boxes yeah. on his shoulder i think he's listening to leonard skinner something crazy like that about going to hell and some if you want to get to heaven <laughs> damn it, damn it you gotta raise a little hell that's the one yeah. and then he's tap dancing to it and he's all but he's it's great oh it's great it is but it's just he's like in perfect rhythm it's and it's amazing you look at these people who are talk at one point in the film they talk about their nicknames, you know, because they're easier to spell or easier to remember and say. I mean, these people have very limited capacity. Yeah. Then this guy gets up there and he plays, he or dances like no one, it ain't nobody's business. You yeah, know? It's, it's, he's a fantastic dancer, and you would think that these country kind of hickish hillbilly guys would, would look down on that, but this tap dancing is like he's I can't like he's I like figured a, it out. Never he's like a damn celebrity <laughs> in those parts. Oh yeah, and he's got this amazing, like old, like probably an eighty-five-year-old accompaniment. Uh, com- what is he? Just like a guitarist that accompanies yeah, him yeah. and plays little songs. He and clearly has no teeth. Oh God, he's like he's like total mountain man. And he was also I don't know if you knew this or noticed, but he was uh, Jesco's father's D. Ray, the original tap dancer. It was his accompaniment too. Oh wow! So it's two generations he played the guitar for. But this guy clearly slips into three different personalities. Oh yeah, and he, he definitely is. I mean, 
he what, what he said basically it's a lot of it's from sniffing Sn- gasoline and, and airplane glue. Yep, he was a, wicked addicted to. Well, first off, you could tell he's probably a, a pretty much a drunk even at this point. But yeah, he he went through a long period of time where he was sniffing gasoline, like Dirty John just said, airplane glue, and yeah. was just out of his mind. Breaking into grocery marts for. Uh to steal glue. To glue, that's right, yeah. And he would just huff and huff and huff in himself into a dream world. Now, I got a clip here. Good, you know, excellent segue right there, Dirty John. You like that? This clip here is actually uh, Jesco White himself, in all his hillbilly glory, describing one of his gasoline dreams. So take a listen to that. We'll be back. And when we come back, we're going to be talking Carl. Paul Hullabaloo, our reporter in the street, has filed a report on the uh, further... Uh, Misadventures on uh, in, in terms of the search for Carl. Get it out. I can't. I always <laughs> screw. I can't have one graceful <laughs> goddamn moment. All right, here it is. Jesco White himself. We'll be back. No positive radio. Stay tuned and please go rent this film, Dancing Outlaw Acme Video Four Five Three Acme. Thank you. Things come to me you wouldn't believe. Just like I'm saying, this woman, a beautiful woman, just like a lady from heaven, like an angel's body. And her head was like a rattlesnake's. And it was sticking its tongue out to me and saying, you can have me if you can catch me. You know, like that. And I got, man, is this real? Am I hallucinating on what the world's got wrong with me? You know, I got to thinking that. And I got to laugh about this. Like, well, I'm watching a movie. You know, I thought of some more watching a movie. Then I caught myself again. I said, no, I'm really tripping out. So I slowed down for a little while. You know, to, I hit myself in the head. I couldn't believe it myself. Shook my head and I... <coughs> <clears throat> cough like that. That's how bad my cough was at the time that I was in hell and stuff. Like I couldn't get no auction. And one time I remember blacking all the way out. I went completely out, and all I remember, it seemed like my heart went all the way out, you know, for a minute and then it come back. Or so many seconds, then my heart started beating again, and this thing, it seemed like I was on a roller coaster ride or going through this haunted house, uh, uh, this thing like a tunnel. And at the end of this tunnel, I seen an eye like an eye and a needle. And it got brighter and brighter and brighter. Just like somebody coming out of a surgery or something, out of a hospital bed. Like going through the valley of death otherwise. I was a going, actually tripping on this stuff. It's heavy. Uh, going through this, and it seemed like to me, man, I made a miracle there. I, I lived through death. And God brought me through that. I was dead. You know, thinking I was dead at one time, where this had me like this. And this was like dark as a coal mine's. And that little light, I hold my hand to God. I'm not lying. I hate to do that, but it was only about this big. And it seemed like it get bigger and bigger and bigger. And at the end of this tunnel, it seemed like everything I looked at was blurry. I'd look like this clock over here sitting. It looked like be two clocks. And it was moving like this with me in slow motion, zigzagging. Then all at once, the clock got plainer. You know, whatever the thing, that I'm telling you, I was tripping. I like the tunnel, the light. It got brighter. And then here is daylight again. And I feel like this uh, incredible survivor through something that I survived through. And I got to thinking, man, my heart actually stopped. And I was dead there for so many seconds. And I was wondering how I got back to life and how come for me to take this journey on this much stuff. I was in hell and then live through it. And I've got to thinking, well, there ain't but one person can bring you from death, and it have to be God Almighty. You know, I got to thinking, Jesus seen the way the devil had me and brought me out of that. And right there, it was a miracle that uh, he done that for me. And that's the reason I say I'm a miracle child of God. If uh, I wasn't, I wouldn't be here talking to you now. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Paul Hullabaloo here. And I just wanted to take a minute of your time to give a big fat no positive radio recommendation to Lily's Astrology, located on Federal Hill right here in glorious Providence, Rhode Island. Lily's Astrology caters exclusively to any curious and open-minded person interested in fortune-telling, palm reading, and tarot card interpretation. Lily is a gifted psychic and offers honest and accurate readings at affordable prices. Lily's Astrology is located on 190 Atwells Avenue, Federal Hill, Providence. You could reach her by phone during normal business hours at 276-0333 to get an appointment, but casual walk-ins are also accepted. So visit Lily's Astrology, where the future can be found in the palm of your hand. That's 190 Atwells Avenue, 
0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-
And from that was born what is now known deep within the underground as the Cult of Carl. Thus began a worldwide whirlwind search for one man, Carl, a thinker of thoughts unfit for the bright, punishing, critical lights of the world stage. A single, solitary, simple woodworker, now feared lost to the flames of eternity. God damn it, I am one poetic son of a bitch. But every search, every perilous quest must have a beginning, an origin, a genesis. Our search for Carl began at the ever-flowing wellspring of searches. Of course, I am talking about Stop and Shop. There, via Soviet satellite link-up, we encountered a meat manager in possession of a keenly unspecified intellect and a devious and labyrinthine set of hidden and merciless and recalcitrant and impregnable hidden agendas. Uh, <laughs> Rob, I need to ask you something. Go ahead. Where is Carl? Where is Carl? Don't play hard to get, Rob. Don't try to sucker play me either. What do you mean? Where's Carl? Rob, well, we're looking for Carl here at No Positive Radio. It's a worldwide search, and I received an anonymous tip that you, Rob, would know exactly where Carl is. And who's that other voice I hear in the room? Oh, that's my partner. Is your partner's name Carl? No. Is your partner bound and gagged to a chair by any chance? Gagged to a chair? Yes. No. Do you have one of those rubber S&M balls in his mouth? No. Where's Carl? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh boy. After encountering a brick wall of dis and misinformation of that impossible magnitude, did we have thoughts of quitting, throwing in the proverbial towel, running for the proverbial hills, or kissing the proverbial cousin? You obviously have no idea just how deep we were into this investigation. This assault on our mission only continued to whet our unquenchable appetites for irrefutable discovery. So, after hours of hardened debate and pot, Plan 4269A was set in motion. A plan so impressively crafted that it was bound to yield a ripe harvest of identifiable clues, if not the hard evidence itself, as to the enigmatic whereabouts of Carl. Famed Cranston Psychic Psychic Lily Mitchell lent her extrasensory expertise to this now dangerously cooling case. Her answers, her psychic impressions, maddeningly meandering, and yet, dare I say, predictable. <laughs> Lily, I've seen many movies, many television programs, uh, uh, many, many episodes of Unsolved Mysteries where police or FBI or authorities call upon psychics mm -hmm. to help them solve crimes. Right. Have you ever been called upon? No. Now, would you be open to that? Oh, uh, I mean, if I can answer the question, I'll answer it. If I can't, you know, I'll be honest. Usually they take the psychic to the scene of the crime and see if the psychic gets, <laughs> gets a vision. Right, I know what you're saying, yeah? No. Do you feel that that's something like that's a plausible, like that could be plausible, the idea of that? Well, yeah, but uh, right now, you know, I'm not going to say I'm going to do that right now. Well, my question to you is this. When I say the name Carl to you, do you get any sort of a, a vibration? Um, uh, actually, no, it doesn't give me anything towards that. You don't get any feeling at all? No, it doesn't give me any feeling at all towards that. Now, do you think that means that person is deceased? They maybe don't have an energy to, to, to uh, transmute anymore? Uh, well, that's, that's not what I'm saying. It doesn't mean that. I'm just feeling no kind of energy, no kind of, uh, it's not reading that at all. Finally, a ray of pristine light cracked through the murky atmosphere of doubt. A blinding shaft of truth in the form of a funeral home answering service girl. A possible lead? You decide. Yeah, what's your show about? Well, essentially what we've been doing the last few weeks is we've been searching for Carl. Searching for who? Carl. Carl. Do you no. know Carl? Do I know Carl? I know a couple of Carls, probably not the one <gasps> you're thinking of. No, no, no. Hey. Well, that's... I don't want to rule out anything. Are you, are you from... The two Carls, you, know, you say you know two Carls. No, I've known Carls in my life. Uh, but right now, in contemporary America today, do you know any Carls? Yes. 
Do you know where his where he is? Right now? And no. <laughs> See, that's no idea. that's the problem we're having. Exactly. Uh -huh. We don't know where he is either. Uh huh. We've been searching for Carl big time, big time, big time. And really, finally, and possibly most importantly, one call came in from an untraceable international line that we traced deep within the suffocating jungle-like recesses of Seekonk's Route 6. Could this call of distinct human complacency in fact be the until now unheard of voice of Carl himself? Could this be the one moment in the weight of time to define all other moments? Again, we leave it in your hands. This, oh. is, this is Carl. <gasps> Wait a minute. I'm not at the stop and shop. Where are you, Carl? I am at the Hojo's. You're at the Hojo's? I'm at the Hojo's. Is that a strip club? Absolutely. Carl, first off, I think I would know your voice. Do you think you can, you can fool me, you kidnapping son of a bitch? I know who this is. I'll see you there after the show, buddy. Carl, you want to come down here? No, I gotta go. Quote, unquote, Carl? Hey, I'll meet you at the Hojo. You want to meet me at the Hojo? We'll have a little hoedown? Wow. A true Agatha Christie-esque mystery for the ages. But the true mystery is whether this mysterious mystery will eventually be solved. This is Paul Hullabaloo reporting. Back to you, Paul and Dirty John, in the WALE studios. Thank you, Paul Hullabaloo, reporting live from the front lines of the search for Carl. What an incredible report that was. Com wow. Completely enlightening. I even learned things about the search for Carl that I didn't know. I didn't know that, 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 that Pot had been involved in Plan 4269A. <laughs> I didn't know. Nobody told me. Nobody invites me to the Pot parties anymore. It's because you don't smoke anymore. Oh, well. Hold on, I think, cover this for one quick second. Cover it and talk. And yes. I yes. want you to explain to people that I'll be right back. Okay. And I have to do something very quick. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul Hullabaloo is now leaving me alone. This is my chance. I'm locking the door. Now I can get him back for all those horrible, horrible things he said about me on the air. Uh, oh, wait, he's, he's returning. He's returning. Oh, our special guest is here. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Paul Hullabaloo again, and uh, I'm here to introduce... You want to do that one? I'm here to introduce a very special guest. Hold on, we got to do this right now. Oh, boy. we got all sorts of things that are happening. A very special guest. Um, I've run that through mic oh. one, which is, which is the furthest one over, really? mic one. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, to wrap up this hour... We, we, we have a call from the Miracle Mark. Tell the Miracle Mark we'll get to him in 12 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> We're going to get to you in 12 seconds. God, these, everything happens at once in the, on this show. We have a guest and everything else. It's, it's this is very easy. important. It's easy down here. This is very important. What I've done here is I've invited a very special guest today to the show to help us in our search for Carl because one thing I've realized is the reason we're having trouble finding Carl is very very simple yes. the reason we can't find Carl is because I don't think we're we're shooting for the right demographic I think the people who are going to help us find Carl are the are the are the Spanish speaking people the, the people speaking Spanish who are fans of this show No Positive Radio so today I right. brought a very close friend of mine a close personal friend and, and colleague of mine here at WALE Pastor Carlos from Radio Ondas de Esperanza, which is the Spanish program that airs every night here at WALE from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. He's here, and what he's going to do is he's going to translate for me yes. everything I have to say and everything Dirty John has to say in order for us to find <laughs> Carl. Oh and boy. I'd like to start by playing the, the, the cart there, getting that cart going. <laughs> Carl, I want you to know... Eh, Carl, eh, yo quiero decirte Everything I do in life Todo lo que yo hago en la vida Is for you Es para ti Every step I take Cada eh, paso que yo doy Is for you Es para ti Carl Carl I can't love you enough Yo no te puedo amar más and now that you're gone, y ahora que te fuiste, 
My love has blossomed. Mi amor me ha abrazado. Know this, Carl. Y ahora, Carl. From this point on in time. En este punto de la vida. From this point on in space. En este punto del espacio. I will search for you. Yo voy a buscarte incansablemente. Even if it kills me. Eh, no importa que aunque me cause morir. Even if good God above decides it's my time to go. Aunque ante eh, el Dios del cielo me llamare, yo voy a seguir buscándote. Even if all the birds in the sky fall dead. Aunque todos los eh, pájaros del campo eh, mueran. I will find you, Carl. Yo te voy a buscar, Carl. Carl, you and I grew up together. Eh, Carl, yo y tú subimos juntos. And I don't forget where I came from. Y yo no voy a olvidar de dónde he venido. Carl, I love you. Carl, yo te amo. Did I already say that? Yo uh, alguna vez he dicho eso? I'll say it again. I love you. Yo quiero decirte nuevamente te amo. Everyone in the world loves you. Todo el mundo te ama, Carl. The heavens above love you. El cielo y todo. And we will search for you y forever. Y vamos a buscarte para siempre. Carl. 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 Carlos, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Carlos. Carlos, yo te doy gracias por el, lo más profundo de mi corazón. No, 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 I'm thanking you, Carlos. Yes, you I don't guess have, oh. uh, the, the way that people in Spanish uh, how do listen they, to them. How do I say in Spanish, how do I say thank you for your help? Okay, gracias eh, por tu ayuda. Gracias por tu ayuda. De nada, Paul. And I want everybody here to listen every single night from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. to Radio Ondas de Esperanza with Carlos and his friends. Did I say that correctly? Yeah, yo quiero decirte que cada uno que me escuche en español puedan sintonizar a Radio Ondas de Esperanza todos los días de 11 hasta las 3 de la madrugada. One of the most amazing and wonderful Spanish uh, radio DJs and personalities in the history of uh, Spanish radio and DJ personalities. Carlos, I thank you. You've done a wonder for me today. You're welcome, my friend. Uh, anytime. God I love you. you. I love you. God, God bless, bless you. you. God bless you. God America. bless you. And God bless America. And God bless Carl. Okay, we're going to a call. We have a call. Hello. Hello. Is this the miracle Mark Wilcox? Am I the call? I'm the call. You, you, you just won the money. You're the ninth caller. Excellent. You win the unopened bottle of Jack Daniels. All and, right. And a Cocker Spaniel. All right. And we love you, too. I'm sorry. I don't have any information on Carl. You don't need to give me information. I want information on you. It's not, not too much information. What do you want? I want to know one thing. What? The Verge album is now complete. Pretty yeah, much. Pretty much. Uh, tell me your feelings on it. My feelings on the album is I think it's amazing. I think it's one of the greatest things I've ever done, besides the Minx now. But I think we did a really good job on it. Uh, Joe Francasio and I. And... Uh, other members of the Verge did a hell of a job. And uh, will you come in? Um, I think it's going to be October 12th. October 12th. Will you come in uh, f f in world premiere a few of those songs? I think I will. If I you can. <coughs> I think that's my wife's birthday. Well, I'm only mm. asking for a goddamn 25 minutes. Oh, <laughs> ah, geez. Oh, of course I will. The wife will understand. This is rock and roll, baby. Of course. The show must go on. Isn't that the truth? But not no positive radio. The show is not going to go on. I know that's sad. I'm sad to hear that. Well, I I, I I jest. We will continue, just probably at a different outlet. I'm glad that you're not going to pay th pay them anymore. You know. I want to get paid. Yeah, exactly. To spread the wealth, right? Exactly. Okay. I just got an electric shock. <laughs> from Dirty John. Yes, from mm. it, from his charisma. <laughs> uh, Mark, I just want to say. Thank you for calling up and, and plugging the album, and I, I hope to God that you can make an appearance here. I will. I, I, pro so. I promise you, Dirty John will bring in the guitar, and we will sing All an right. acoustic, cringe-style, punk folk rendition of Happy Birthday to your beautiful wife, oh. Jennifer McGee Wilcox. That's there very nice. She's All right, that'll be a little surprise. She'll it. be turning 14. 
<laughs> on October 12th. Yes. <laughs> Mark likes some young and Asian. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, but thank you very much, Mark. Uh, right, what are you, you doing? What are you doing in a few minutes? I'm going down to uh, work on the Virgin and drink some beer. Well, I will join you down there if you don't Excellent. mind. Would you like me to bring the beer? Please bring the bat my bass ale. Actually, your beer and your uh, vodka. Oh yeah! Bring yeah, it all. Let's yeah. just get completely whacked. Anyone else want to come down and get <laughs> drunk with us? Call. Call my <laughs> cell phone. Let me give you my cell phone number. It's five 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 F U C K Y O U. Uh oh! <laughs> you can uh -oh. spell it. Giggly, not again! Oh jeez, I'm late on it. <laughs> oh giggly. <laughs> all right, guys. Mark, thank you very much. Thank you. I'll again. see you soon, and right. we'll look forward to seeing you again appearing on the show October twelfth. All right, great. Goodbye. Thanks, bye. All right, I'm gonna do my wrap up. I'm going to wrap up tonight. Bye. I'm going to wrap up really quickly by saying, what did we go over today? You're going to go out and you're going to rent two things from Acme Video this week. You're going to do your homework this week for No Positive Radio. Yeah. You're going to go to Brook Street in East Providence, or you're going to call the number 401-453-ACME. 453-ACME. And what are the two films they're going to ask for? Dirty John? Oh, wow. Fishing with Gandhi. But I'm, I'm blanking on the new Dancing Outlaw. Outlaw oh, Dancing. Geez. You are not helping Dancing me. Dancing Outlaw. Dancing, Dancing Outlaw, Outlaw. A wonderful documentary that you heard a clip from, and you should see. And, and But Fishing with Gandhi, especially, because yeah. we have them coming up next uh, Next week, we'll next be week. doing a live uh, show, a live interview, uh, slash no, appearance by the stars. I can't. I'm sorry. I'm totally talking over. It's all right. What else is new? It's not my show anymore. It's yours. I can't be responsible for any of the phone screw-ups next week. I'm telling you that now. They're going to be calling in on one line. Oh, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome your calls next week. If you watch the movie and you want to talk to them, they are hilariously yeah. an intelligent. You know, it's intelligent humor. It's not stupid Farrelly Brothers bullshit. This is intelligent humor. Mm -hmm. So get get it there. It's original. It's unique. You may not even understand why you're laughing, but trust me, you'll laugh. Fishing with Gandhi, and they're also. I can't believe I almost forgot. They're promoting their new film, which is making yeah. the uh, film festival circuit right now. It's called Cow Monkey. If you want more information on these guys, also go to www.cowmonkey one word cowmonkey.com, and you'll get all sorts of information on the Richmond twins, the the writer and director of both films, Gabe Weisert, and Fishing with Gandhi and Cow Monkey, the two films. Go out and rent Fishing with Gandhi, and Dancing Outlaw. Mm -hmm. Also, I'd like to s send a special thank you to. Pastor Carlos from Radio Ondas de great, Esperanza. I hope that help is, uh, yeah, help is. I know help is on the way now. Helps us, uh, you know, in our search for Carl. Help is on the way. Those Spanish people, if they do one thing right in this world, they look for missing people. Yeah. Or they hide them. That's one of the two things. So. Hopefully, no, don't find Carl and hide him. <laughs> don't do that. How do you say it in Spanish? Dirty John, how do you say don't hide him? Escuendo del mare. Escuendo del mare, Carl. Yes, yeah, Carl. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, thank you very much. And remember, like I said, I meant every word of it when I said I love you people for listening. I love this program. I have nothing more in my life that I'm probably more proud of. I love it. So let me do my thank yous. I'd like to thank WALE. I'd like to thank Mike Lucas. I'd like to thank Dirty John Winterbottom. Anyone you? No. Okay, he doesn't like anyone this week. <laughs> Family is out the goddamn window. I'd like to thank, of course, John Monez. John Monez Empire Tattoo Machines and ElectricInc.com. ElectricInkTattoo.com, I should say. Yeah. Lawrence DeGusto Jr., ElectricInkTattoo.com. Those two two of the greatest tattoo artists in the country right now. I'd also like to thank Shelly Monez, Malcolm, Haley, uh, Ed, and Little Henry Monez. I'd like to thank Dolores White, Bill White, Damian White, Alexandra White. I'd like to thank Kristen. I'd like to thank the beautiful and progressive Blake Hines, one of the greatest photographers I've ever met. I'd like to thank Lawrence DeGusto Sr. and Gene DeGusto. Sometimes you just roll this thing out today. Of course. You know who I'm going to thank? I know I'm going to thank five times in a row. Who? Jeff Phillips, 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 Jeff Phillips. Ten thank yous for Jeff Phillips. Wow. One of my best friends. I'm glad that I'm glad to know him, and I look forward to seeing him anytime I do. Jay Brem. Yep. And finally, I'd like to thank you people at home, because I love you. Vinny Braddy. Of course, Vinny. 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 Hey. Vinny. Hey. No Positive Radio loves you. Manuel Joy Pacheco, tune in next week for the Fishing with Gandhi guys, James and John Richmith, right here on No Positive Radio. Tune in the next week after that, Wild Blue Angels. So, until next Friday at 8, this is Paul Hullabaloo asking you kindly to subject, oppose, subvert, and what? Always, let's say it together. Live, Live the, the life! life! Woo!